What does the modern Brillhart mouthpiece and Megatron have in common? Well, they're both cheap, mold-injected plastic and surprisingly fun. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dr. Wally Wallace, and welcome to the Saxophone Academy channel. If you're looking for product reviews and saxophone masterclasses, please do subscribe and stay tuned. Now this week we have a full review of the Brillhart Ebelin mouthpiece. Now this is the modern one, not the vintage one. Brillhart has a rich, long history with mouthpieces starting back in 1939, when Arnold Brillhart started making mouthpieces up in New York. And Brillhart has made some of the most iconic saxophone mouthpieces in history, especially the Ebelin and the Tonalin. And some of the greatest saxophonists throughout history have played these mouthpieces. Charlie Parker, Lester Young, Stan Getz, Bud Shank, and Zoot Sims. But finding a good vintage Brillhart is not easy. It's expensive and it's a bit of a risk. And if you're not there yet, this Brillhart Ebelin could be the perfect stopgap while you save money for your Grail mouthpiece. And in later episodes, we'll be diving in and I'll let you follow me on my journey in search of my perfect vintage Brillhart mouthpiece. I've been talking to the good people at getasax.com. You should check out their website. They've got some really cool vintage pieces. Now, back in the 1960s, Brillhart was acquired by the Selmer Company, and they make this current line. Now, it's just mold-injected plastic. That means it's cheap, it's not hand-finished, and even the box it comes in is kind of depressing, really. There's no reason this should be a good mouthpiece, but no one told this Brillhart that. ago I did a recording session on this very plastic $47 mouthpiece. At the time I was in grad school and this was cheap and it gave me the sound I was looking for. Now I could have bought a very expensive vintage piece but I would have also needed money for a divorce attorney at that time. This served the purpose just fine. After that recording session, I kind of wondered, did I just win the plastic lottery? Was this a fluke? So I ordered four more. And what I found was interesting. Three of them were very good. Another one was so good, it became my primary mouthpiece. Though admittedly, one of the other ones was just special. But three out of four ain't bad. So now let's go through some rapid fire answers to questions I know you have. Plenty loud. It could easily work for lead alto playing, and Maceo Parker plays one. And if it's loud enough for Maceo Parker, it should be fine for you. More playing dates or gigs? Probably not. More romantic dates? No. Easily. But remember, with great altissimo comes great responsibility. Pew, 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 pew. Yes. So for less than 50 bucks, it's a heck of a value, and I really do like it. Are there downsides? Yeah, there's a few. First off, it's plastic, which means in theory, it will chip, shatter, break, and crack more easily than hard rubber. Though I will say I have dropped mine a couple of times, and it bounced in a rather pleasant way. But I think that was just lucky. Also, plastic in general is less comfortable on your teeth, this has a little white bite plate, which strangely is even less comfortable than the rest of the mouthpiece. But that's easily solved by just putting a mouthpiece patch over it, no problem. Another drawback, all of them that I own fit very loosely on the cork. Now you can get a new cork and that's not a problem, but if you're a player that switches between multiple mouthpieces, say a classical mouthpiece that fits tightly in this, it's a pain in the butt. This feels like it just wiggles right off. And also being a shorter, stockier mouthpiece, you kind of have to pull it further back on the neck, which kind of exacerbates that problem. So who is this mouthpiece good for? Well, any player that wants a vintage sound but doesn't have a huge bank account, AKA most saxophonists. I also think it's a great choice for any classical player that wants to switch over and learn jazz. There's something about the narrow sidewalls and tall square chamber shape that just kind of helps facilitate getting jazz articulation and sound. Now jazz sound comes from transcription, no question about it, but this does kind of help you out in edging you towards a warmer jazz sound so you don't feel like you're peeling paint off the wall. Now I have no plans of giving up my Ebelin anytime soon, but it has kind of inspired me to go on a hunt for my Grail mouthpiece. I've always loved the old vintage Tonalins. I just think they look really cool. So I've been in touch with the good people at getasax.com and I'll be checking out their stock 
and let you know what it's like and get some tips on finding a good vintage mouthpiece. In the meantime, please do subscribe, stay tuned, and give us a like if you found this useful, and we'll see you next week.